Hi everybody, this is Jim Egan, head of school, set up school, coming to you over fall break. I hope many of you had a uh, restorative, if not somewhat more relaxing break. I know school leadership certainly has. Uh, I've heard from staff and teachers. Uh, they very much needed this break too. Uh, remember, we started the academic year earlier than most schools, uh, and we now have um, a big push into the fall uh, to prepare for uh, with campus opening uh, and online uh, instruction going on too. There is uh, certainly a fatigue that was felt and so uh, I want to say I appreciate um, everybody out there allowing for this break to happen. It was, uh, it was good uh, for many of us. Um, so there's a lot in the news going on, uh, certainly uh, although I've been unplugged somewhat, uh, I have been following along. And it's hard to embrace uh, optimism these days. I talk about optimism quite a bit. I think one of the uh, value adds that, um, that come with being part of Synapse is that you are joining uh, a group of people who really believe in optimism, right? That we are promoting that as um, not only an essential skill, but um, as a, a lifestyle choice. And so I wanna talk a little bit more about that because it is, it's, it is a difficult uh, thing for some, some these days, right? That, that, uh, that embracing of optimism in a time when the news is um, so dramatic and dark and stark. Um, but um, that's what we do, right? One of our values uh, here is be positive, right? And so, you know, optimism is key, right? Also, optimism is the underpinning for, um, for innovation, for entrepreneurship, for creativity, right? We're teaching our kids these skills and, and allowing them to adopt these mindsets. Uh, optimism is necessary. Now, why is it necessary? Well, these skills uh, require resilience. They require risk-taking. They require um, to understand that failure is not an end, but actually is the pathway to success, right? We have to sort of reframe it. And so optimism is so key to what we do as educators and who we are as a community. Um, so, but let's be clear, we're not Pollyannas here, right? We are problem solvers and our kids are going to have lots of problems to solve. Uh, so we're gonna to continue to exercise optimism. Yes, exercise, exercise is hard work. Uh, and we're gonna do it, we're gonna continue to do it. And um, I'm optimistic for, for this fall and, and when we get back from break and what, what we sort of uh, head into for the next eight weeks. And these next eight weeks are really critical. They're critical for learning, they're critical for our community, and they're um, important for our own well-being. So with that being said, there are some uh, bits of news that came over break. We have lots going on. Uh, right on campus right now. Bob Bear is there doing great work. You'll see uh, those of you who ch chose um, uh, to be on campus for the hybrid instruction, there uh, are facilities upgrades going on right now, which is really exciting. I won't spoil uh, them. You'll have, to, you'll have to come and check them out. Uh, also, the seventh and eighth grade, um, I know families are eager to have those uh, many of those families uh, back uh, have their kids back on campus. And so um, we got word from the county, they let us know that on October 6th, um, there will be more clarity on whether we can have seventh and eighth graders back on campus. Right now, we are uh, optimistic and we're planning for a tentative start date on October 19th for seventh and, seventh and eighth graders uh, whose families have chosen hybrid campus learning. Uh, there are many things that go into this, uh, from uh, increasing our testing uh, protocols, um, uh, changing schedules, you know, uh, adapting our um, learning spaces for that afternoon session. So there's a lot to do. So the potential start date is October 19th. We'll find out more from the county on October 6th. Uh, the other thing I want to say, be sure to read the email that is going out. There's lots of information in there uh, that you need to know. Uh, keep in mind, we are starting in distance this coming week, all of us, in order for us to be tested. Um, this is a key safety protocol for us, for us all. And like I said, the next eight weeks are really important. So remember, um, stay healthy, 
uh, stick to what has been working. Uh, we have community guidelines for reducing risk on our website, so take a look. Please, please, please follow them. Uh, it's, if you've been watching the news, it's very clear. This is a serious virus. Uh, and we all um, have to take it seriously. Uh, make sure your kids are safe too, safe socializing, whether online or at school. Um, flu shots, critically important right now. Uh, and routines, right? Having your kids stick to some routines. Uh, uh, and adults, I'm a big believer in routines. Uh, those are really important now for our emotional well-being, physical safety, and health. Um, and then as we head into the fall, uh, let's treat each other with some compassion and engage in uh, meaningful conversations, right? That's uh, something I've been thinking a lot about this past week um, with the divisive uh, nature of the discourse going on in our country. It's, uh, it was good to be a, away from that and sort of unplug from that. Um, I think we can, we can do better uh, as, a, as a small uh, but powerful school. Um, so I would love to see um, compassionate conversation emanate from our um, kids and our staff, but certain our family, certainly our families too. Um, all right, take care of yourself. Uh, I'll see you soon and um, have a great weekend. Uh, be well.